Schultz, the owner of the Brockamore Manor. Rick Jorgensen is waiting for us now. This is a gorgeous B&B, a historical building built in 1809, and they are known for an incredible four-course breakfast. Let's go check it out. We are here at Brockamore Manor with Rick Jorgensen. We are in the great room, and it is a spectacular room. Rick, uh, tell us a little bit about this incredible B&B. Well, uh, Brockmore Manor dates back to 1809. It was uh, built by Captain John Powell, um, and he built it in preparation for his marriage to uh, Isabella Shaw. Mm -hmm. And Isabella Shaw was the daughter of Ania Shaw, who was uh, uh, a wealthy uh, landowner in Boston that fought um, in the Revolutionary War or War of Independence, depending on which side of the pond he came from. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, he fought alongside uh, Lord Simcoe, um, and when Lord Simcoe was sent uh, out here to resettle, uh, he sent for uh, Aeneas Shaw, who had come up to New Brunswick with the Empire Loyalists. And um, he came out and helped uh, Simcoe settle uh, this area. And he built this gorgeous home for her? Um, uh, uh, Powell built the home. Uh, he was also um, the son of uh, William Dummer Powell, so the first Attorney General of Upper Canada. Mm -hmm. So the home was uh, very prestigious because of the family background. Um, so it was built out of block and stone um, so that uh, in the War of 1812, when the whole town was burned to the ground, um, this home didn't burn to the ground because the walls were uh, made out of stone. So it's one of the few buildings that uh, remain standing after the War of 1812. Mm -hmm. And this is really a stunning um, B&B with all the history that it has here. It is so rich and this, the structure, I know you've had an addition put on, it's about 8,000 square feet and every room is um, absolutely, uh, done absolutely incredibly. Um, and there's also a little bit of a, a scary um, history here. I, I think there's a ghost that resides here apparently or maybe you can tell us whether it's true or not. Well, um, it depends on uh, which viewpoint you um, <laughs> you have, right? Um, what was that? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. The, the, uh, the, it is purported as part of uh, folklore that uh, we have Sophia, who was Isabella's youngest uh, um, or younger sister, mm -hmm. who lived here with uh, Powell uh, and Isabella. And uh, as the story goes, uh, uh, Brock uh, was visiting Enos Shaw because Shaw was appointed the Executive Council of Upper Canada. And so it, it, it's likely that they would have met at some time because Brock was always uh, looking for money from the uh, administration to help organize the troops. So um, we uh, go by the folklore that uh, Brock uh, met. Um, as the story goes, they fell in love, carried on a romance. and. Uh, uh, when he was uh, killed in the first battle on, in Queenston Heights, um, uh, she she uh, lived a full uh, life. She never married. She uh, stayed single her entire life. Uh, uh, moved into Toronto after they sold the home in the 1830s um, and lived there until she was 80. But as the story goes, she came back uh, visiting and uh, stayed here. Looking for her true love, perhaps. Looking for her true love. Um, Brockamore, the name Brockamore comes from that uh, folklore. It wasn't given to the home when it became a b and It's carried that name for uh, decades prior to, to it being a and b So uh, amour is a French word for love, so Brockamore is love of Brock. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about the, the home, but what about the breakfast part of the bed and breakfast here? Well, um, the, all of the bed and breakfasts in this area are wonderful. Um, we're part of a, a wonderful network of bed and breakfasts in uh, uh, Niagara-on-the-Lake. Um, I'm sure you travel the world as, as, as we do, and when we stay in bed and breakfast, none can compare to what uh, people find in, in Niagara-on-the-Lake. And here at Brockamore, we... Um, we like to take care of our guests. They have we sit on almost an acre of land, so they have lots of uh, room to wander around, and um, we have various areas for them to to sit. And we serve a four course gourmet style breakfast that changes uh, every day, so um, no one uh, will have two the same breakfast twice here, unless they stay for more than ten days, and then <laughs> then we're done. So. That would be absolutely <laughs> awful. <laughs> go over the cycle again you start over again I guess no after the 10th no. uh, after the 10th day um, we uh, tell our guests that they get to choose which is their favorite and everyone else um, has to put up with their choice so oh, okay. 
Okay, well, that's very democratic, I think. Or, <laughs> or is that autocratic? I'm not really sure. <laughs> and you also have an, an, a very old tree out back. I mean, just to speak to the history of the property as well. Yes, we have a uh, uh, spruce tree that's about, uh, I don't know how, how tall it would be, maybe 80 to 100 feet. Um, that we had an arborist because after a windstorm we had some damage to some trees, so we had him come out and check. And uh, he came out and... Uh, that's Sophie. <laughs> he came out and um, and checked the uh, the trees, and we asked him about the spruce tree because we were a little concerned about it. And he said, no, it's um, strong. It's been there for more than 250 years, so it'll remain standing for a long time. So some of the branches are as big as some of the other trees on the property. It's amazing. Incredible. I think we should have a party in this great room. No? What do you think? Absolutely. We um, have parties here quite often, so... Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful home. Uh, we really enjoy it. Um, it's, it's warm even though it's big. It, it, it feels uh, quite warm and homey and our guests really enjoy coming. Well, thank you for taking the time to speak with us this afternoon, Rick. Well, thank you for visiting and uh, come back anytime and hopefully uh, Soy, uh, Sophia will uh, come and greet you at the door. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. <laughs>